Okay, hey everybody, we're back for another week of Yolitix. Uh, just with uh, me starting us off this time, because of course, Whiteley is nowhere to be found once again. I don't know what kind of deal he must have worked out, uh, but uh, he has more vacation, I think, than any person I have ever worked with. Uh, so we'll do it again without him this week, just to prove that we don't actually need Jason Whiteley. Uh, this time we are at uh, the Bitter Sisters Brewing Company in Addison. Uh, it, it is a, uh, a family-run place, and the story goes that uh, someone who married into the family, there's three sisters in this family. If you have ever met a family where there are three sisters, you know that it makes sense to have the word bitter in front of there. there you know, there's gonna be things that erupt. There are gonna be fights and disagreements. Uh, so someone who married into this family, uh, it turned out was uh, skilled in making beers and figured out early on that the best way to make everyone get along in the family was to share that skill. Uh, and so the beer started flowing, people started getting along, and then they thought, well, let's spread this out and let everybody else have some of this too. And so the Bitter Sisters Brewing Company was born. And uh, I was just talking to uh, one of the owners a few minutes ago and asked him like, so you know, the peace is still being kept. And he said, as much as the peace can be kept in a family with three sisters. Uh, so we are joined today by Charlie Hollis, who is the Director of Operations at LNP Global Security. Uh, that is a security firm in Addison, Texas. If you're not familiar with Addison, uh, if you just go straight up the Dallas North Tollway from downtown Dallas, uh, uh, you will hit Addison with all the restaurants and bars and so forth, and LNP Secure Global Security, <laughs> and we have uh, we've met you here in your own backyard, Charlie. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about how incredibly busy you all have it's been busy. and why that is as we wow. get ready for back to school uh, in particular. Uh, as busy as you all have been, I'm just curious, does anyone have a leave policy like Jason Whiteley does where they're uh, no. away from work more than they're there? Well, I mean, uh, Except for me and Wanda, the entire staff. So <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all working double yeah. duty. Yeah, they're working very hard. So, and you no don't have any it. hope of taking time off anytime soon, do you? Oh uh, no. Yeah. Not you know, it's just it, the time crunch, mm. right? I mean, it was uh, so, uh, people are coming late to the party. Wadi wasn't, mm -hmm. but the rest of them are a little late to the party. So let's talk about this. Most people, when I say LMP Global Security, wouldn't think, oh, you know, this has to do with going back to school, uh, but this is a marriage now um, because uh, things are changing here in Texas as far as school security goes, uh, especially in light of what we saw uh, in Uvalde um, in May of last year. Uh, tell me a little bit about this. This all goes back to House Bill 3. Yep. It was passed in May of right. this year, uh, signed by the governor, uh, signed into law in June. And basically it says uh, every campus uh, has to have a an armed security uh, guard uh, in place as we go into this next well, school year. Well, it's one of the options, right? It's right. one of the options. They, had, they can school, uh, they can arm their teachers, which is just a recipe for disaster. If you haven't been in that line of work, it's... I would think that would be dangerous. Before you go on, uh, kind of explain that a little bit. You, you, I mean, you have a ton of experience. You were an NYPD officer for decades. Yeah. Um, so you've seen a lot. Uh, you've been, you know, in this field for a long time. Talk about the thought of arming well, teachers. It's it's interesting because I was a, a cop with uh, in the South Bronx and in Harlem and a, and a detective, and I went through nine. I was in the building of nine eleven before it collapsed. So there's a mechanics to the fear of whether or not you'll participate if the if people start if you have to return fire or any incident you I'm a firm believer and always have been that you perform like you practice mm -hmm. so you have all these cops are going to shooting going to scenarios doing all these things and then someone shoots at you and you that's when you discover whether or not you can do it so if cops gear are built to run towards things people run from you can't expect a teacher to do that same thing. That's not what they're trained for. It's not their mindset. Mm -hmm. And that was what is worrisome to me about arming teachers. So even if they get some additional it's 20 training, hours. Yeah, that's uh, that that in your experience as, as a law enforcement officer, no, not that's not going to be enough to create that instinct. Absolutely not. I, I in my opinion, no. I don't think that. I mean, first of all, you're never really sure, right? Until someone pulls a gun on you and you return fire, that's when you know you can do it. Until then, it's all theory. Uh, it, teachers they're awesome people i think they're great god bless them for working in schools and they don't get paid a lot i understand to work there so you know, it's got to be something they believe in 
but to ask them to hold a gun and point at somebody who's got a, a, an assault weapon, I don't know. I, I would question their ability to do that and, and not just freeze up. And then what do you do? They leave their classrooms to engage them, hmm. leave the students empty. Uh, that's a, to me is not a great idea. And I think the SROs that they hire in is cost prohibitive mm -hmm. for most schools. The school resource officers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're um, you know, there would be people on the other side of that, though, who would say, well, look at Uvalde. You had hundreds and hundreds of law enforcement officers show up, and they seemed like they were paralyzed in the hallway. Uh, again, that's, that's what I'm talking about. You, it's all good when you're shooting at targets. It's all good when the paintballs are coming at you, and you know you're not going to die from it. But I was shot, and I know exactly how it feels to have the fear that this might be something ending You for were you. shot in the line of duty years Yeah, ago. but in my vest, mm -hmm. but it busted up some ribs. But you still have the sort of feel like, you know, this, there is an ending to this if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. So Uvalde, I mean, I, I, I was a cop for years. I don't know, I understand what happened. I would never have st stood by whether I was directed to by a chief of police or not in those circumstances. And no cop I ever worked for, the boss I ever worked for would have even implied for us not to go in and address that immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if it was cowardice. I don't know if it was afraid to go in because of the sound, but uh, again, that's just something that happens and mm -hmm. you've got to be very you've got to and I couldn't ask a teacher to make those decisions they they made a poor decision mm -hmm. in, in my opinion and again one of the things that came out of what mm -hmm. happened in Uvalde was mm -hmm. uh, that the legislature took up some different uh, initiatives the last time around mm -hmm. um, and um, you know there are people who thought that maybe they could have gone further with you know the things that they could have done to safeguard schools mm -hmm. uh, but here we have this plan where there's this option where you can have an armed officer on every campus uh, to be able to try right. to you know help you know spot something uh, early on LNP global security that's where you all come in yes. um, and uh, talk about what you offer specifically for school districts it, this isn't an, an area that you know you probably dealt with a whole lot before mm -hmm. now is it no in NYPD we didn't have uh, dedicated officers to schools mm -hmm. there was if your school was in the precinct you were in and there were 72 of them they um, then you handled the school issues but we didn't have a dedicated at least not then mm -hmm. with this I wanted to when they first approached me about it but Wanda and I I wanted to run like an SR program SRO program I wanted to give a dedicated officer per school, not one that rotates around, not one that, that goes from place to place. Uh, so you got a dedicated officer, that's their school. I set a sergeant to handle all the schools to go by and make sure that they're okay. And I have a lieutenant assigned to the sergeants to make sure they're not hanging out in one school too much. Mm. They, have to, they have to move around, they have to keep mobile. Uh, and then, you know, we removed a lot of the artillery and weaponry on them just so it doesn't appear to parents like there's a need for this. Mm -hmm. They carry a gun, they carry um, handcuffs, and they have a vest, but the vest is, I told them to wear it inside their shirt. Mm -hmm. We don't want to startle parents. I mean, I have a kid in 10th grade. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but I was saying, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's like the oldest father. And I, I have a shirt that says, I'm not his grandfather. I swear to God, every time I go in, <laughs> I'm right. not good, because it's crazy, right? I mean, I walk in, I, we went to that meeting yesterday, the family thing. Yeah. And, they were like, oh, sir, can I get you a chair? I mean, it was ridiculous. You know, <laughs> they're they going to fall out. That's funny. But the um so you're a parent you get it oh yeah you and, get the concerns right and and i understand why a parent would be concerned and that's why we make great efforts to vet everyone we check mm -hmm. i do a five-point check on it then we send it to ncic and tcic to run theirs which is a state mm -hmm. that only law enforcement people can get a hold of yeah um make sure they they fit make sure they understand the protocol make mm -hmm. sure that they're trained efficiently otherwise i mean I mean, I'll be honest with you, Jason. This is, you know, this is a windfall for a company, right? Yeah. That's I right. mean, they make a, they make a good pocket change off this thing. All right. I don't. We don't get that money, <laughs> right? right? So we get ours is more making sure the kids aren't hurt, right? Making sure that they're okay. Make sure the faculty's okay. Make sure it's not embarrassing for us, mm -hmm. uh, the guards we send over. So we're very particular about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and so, you know, there are a lot of parents, you know, every school year as we get ready to go back to school, we hear from these parents who are concerned. They're worried about sending the kids to school. You know, they've seen, you know, so many of these school shootings, including here in Texas. Yeah. Uh, the kids are concerned about that as well. Uh, and this aims to alleviate a bit of that and to hopefully stop the next Uvalde from happening. Um, I think yeah. that a lot of people think that 
a lot of these school districts have their own police forces. The bigger ones that they do, um, but but not all of them do, and so that's why they turn to a company like yours, right? Uh, so that they can get officers to come in, especially you know if they have to have some kind of plan in place by September first, which is what the law <laughs> is. Uh, they've got to that's have those bad. officers there right. uh, on on their campuses. And, and maybe they just don't have, what, the infrastructure to be able to, to hire a staff like that, or they don't have the budget? The, the schools themselves, the budgets, it's, it, you know, you're given, Governor Abbott gave them a certain amount of money per campus. I think it was like $15,000 per, per, per school. campus. Yeah. And the problem with that is, is and I'll be honest with you, it, it cuts it in half. I mean, they, we, that pays half of what any, and we're, we come in, uh, we don't ask for, well, there's things we give them that we don't charge for. And it still is expensive. Mm -hmm. It's an expensive venture. And you know, they're only bringing us in for elementary schools right now mm -hmm. because uh, I think they need arrestable uh, people who are TECO certified and mm -hmm. can arrest at high schools and middle schools. And these guard, guards are not TECO certified. Mm -hmm. Military background, we try for retired police, they're almost impossible to get mm -hmm. because, you know, they have a skill set that requires more money. Right. Um, but so we have the elementary schools. and. I tell the guards when we're talking to them, when Wanda and I are talking to them, that, you know, you're the first line. If someone comes in there, God forbid, and, and starts pointing weapons at some kids or faculty member, you're the first line. You're going to be the first one to stop him. Mm. Before the police get there, you're going to be the first one to engage with them because they're not traveling from anywhere. They're there. They're mm -hmm. on post. And, you know, you hope from all the training that we give them that they perform like they are trained. Mm -hmm. You hope that. So uh, there are a couple of districts in, in North Texas, especially, that have mm. turned to, to you all uh, here recently. Wiley uh, is, is one of right. them. Wiley. Allen as well, I yep. believe. Allen. Um, talk a little bit about um, how busy it has been as we sprint to this finish line, which is really the beginning line of September 1st. That's when the state sort of laid it out that by yep. September 1st, you need to have your plan in place. If right. you're going to have an officer on campus, they need to be there, et cetera, right. et cetera. Um, are you, uh, is your phone ringing off the hook right it, now? It's interesting because uh, Wanda and I get the, the calls. Wanda's in HR. She's in HR, guys. yeah, and uh -huh. she's a sweetheart. Um, so Irving's called, Mesquite's called, Garland's called, uh, Blan Blanco in Austin's called. Mm -hmm. So there's been about 15 calls. Mm -hmm. And I tell them the hard start date of uh, August 10th is only Wiley and, and Allen. And Allen was a struggle. Mm -hmm. Wiley, they were on board very quickly. Mm -hmm. You, you got to go through the city board. You got to go through the school board. You got to convince them, which is better. They're talking about dollars and cents, but they then there's an assumption that they could just say, "Okay, we're good. Pack them in." But there's not. We have to vet them. Mm -hmm. Everyone has to go through a very detailed with us, a very uh, especially Wanda and I, because we very detailed vetting on those. So I can't have. I, I had one came in and <laughs> was a sex offender. <laughs> Jeez. Yes. Wow. Not a guard, just wanted to work at a school, and I said, you know that. I'm not even sure you can be in the room with me. Right. So much less a bunch of kids. So, uh, bye -bye. Mean, so yeah. yeah, it was. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and yeah. these are all real things that happen when you're, you know, yeah. ramping up an operation and trying Absolutely. to vet people. Um, so is there an ability, I guess, to meet the demand that's going to be out there oh, uh, yeah. to put officers at each one of these campuses? Yeah, we can, we can fill them up. Uh, we have no problems with getting them. It's just we vet so tight mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. that we like right now i tell anyone who's called me you can go to your school board you can talk to them all day but i cannot get it there on august 10th that's out mm -hmm. september 1st we can manage that mm -hmm. but anything before september 1st at this point is going to be undoable and if there are having i think security firms that can do it my guess is you better, I hope the schools are vetting them as well. Yeah, because, you know, we're, this is supposed to be a solution to a problem. The right. last thing we want to see is new problems that come right. from, you know, the wrong folks being sent to schools. Absolutely. And if, you're, if you've got a large staff, like hundreds of employees, and you can just say you 17 are going over here, they've got to be vetted because even during the time they're there, things can occur that doesn't flag. Mm -hmm. So we have a setup with our Dallas County guys that if they get locked up at all, it flags to Dallas County, and then they let us know, and we remove them. Mm -hmm. But if you work for me ten years, I, I, I'll, and I could just send you off somewhere. I don't know what you did during those ten years because mm -hmm. I won't get a flag for it. This gets very complex. It does, and it, and it becomes taxing. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we grab everybody, and we vet everybody as if they're a new employee. Mm -hmm. And I think probably what do you think out of ten we get three or four or five before yeah, we can wow. actually. Win. And then there's the you know the appearance. I don't want you know the. 
the, the, like the Duck Dynasty. Yeah, beard. This, I can't. <laughs> I mean, there's just, there's just no reason for that. So I mean, yeah, and, you know, it's just so big. Yeah. So that we obviously don't want them there. Yeah, because uh, they're, they're around a different population, exactly. which is kids, and 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 I guess that that you know brings its own trickiness as well. Oh, I mean, this isn't just like you know. I, I know that you all have done like you know bodyguard protection, protecting yeah. sites, etc. Uh, you know, uh, businesses and, and so forth. This is a different animal, isn't it? It is because you, you're appealing to multiple groups here. You, you're appealing to the appealing to the leadership of a of Addison or Allen, mm-hmm. uh, the superintendents, directors of security. Then you've got the faculty and staff and the skids mm-hmm. in the school, and then you have the parents, and that's uh, that's an X factor that no one's sure about because mm-hmm. they come in and they if they can look at someone and say I'm, I don't think this is a good fit, and they start making complaints. Mm-hmm. And we have a very clear policy that if they're, they're unhappy with the guards, we replace them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't fire them, but we move them out of the site unless there's a reason for them to be fired. Uh, so let me ask you, um, you know, so we have this program in place here in Texas, you know, starting in mm-hmm. September where, you know, at a lot of these campuses, there will be at least one armed guard. Absolutely. Um, I'm curious about how much one person can do. You know, some of these campuses, we know they're sprawling, they're big, et cetera. Yeah. And then you have this issue of, you remember Parkland, uh, oh, Florida, yeah. where, sure. you know, there, there was so much made of the fact that, you know, yeah. the, the person who could have intervened, the person who was there on campus to do that sort of mm-hmm. thing, stayed outside uh, while the shots were I being I saw fired. that. I think he was a cop, right? Yeah. yeah so it, I, I guess the question is, how much difference do you think in your you know background that one person can or will make? You know, I when I was a cop, we had, I had a partner, right, for all those years. So I never really went by myself. But the elementary schools, I think, are smaller mm-hmm. in size. And we're only covering the elementary schools now. Mm-hmm. And then there's a setup where they have, um, they check the doors, they, pr- they walk the perimeters, and they're basically drop off, pick up. It's, it's omnipresence, right? I mean, it's like, so people can see a body there. And you hope, God forbid, it should happen if someone comes in that they're the first one onto the scene or can get to them mm-hmm. that quickly, right? So um, it's sprawling, and there is only one. They're, they're not paying for any more than one. Mm-hmm. Uh, matter of fact, it's, we don't even have a, we have a sergeant who has a car, and he drives around to all the schools to check on them, but the guard is there solo mm-hmm. every day. So it's a, there's a, I mean, would I prefer to have two there? Absolutely. But that's just not the way it's going to be. I wonder right. if in, in your head, just because you have you know so many different experiences mm-hmm. of being out on the streets and mm-hmm. so forth, you're overseeing the vetting of, of these yeah. uh, officers uh, that you're sending out there. Yeah. Um, I wonder if in your head, you know, once we get to September 1st and you know, mm-hmm. you've got all of these yeah. guards <laughs> out at these different campuses, how well do you sleep at that point? Because this is a big, this is a lot of responsibility to take on. Uh, you know, I mean, I, it's both what I've talked about. It's, it's a sad thing in actuality that we can't have hands on more with it as operational part of it. Hmm. So we, what do you mean? Well, we work really hard to get everybody vetted and we trust that they can handle the job. We train them. So we've done everything that we can do with our, with the resources that are demanded. I mean, they don't want two guards. Mm -hmm. They don't want to pay for two guards and that's fine. I mean, it's, it's expensive. So you'd have to train the one guard to be very good at his job and you hope that he is. But you're right. I mean, now I, I drive my kid to school, and I let him off at Vaughn Elementary in Frisco, right? And he gets out, and I walk, he walks in, and I think, you know, for these hours, you have the most precious thing in the world to me. And you've got control and custody of them, and you've got to make sure I get him back in one piece. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I mean, you have, you have kids? Yeah. So you know what that's like, right? Mm-hmm. You have kids. You have yeah. kids. I might have to say that. <laughs> Wanda's yeah. sitting here you know, having her secrets exposed by you. And she doesn't have a microphone to defend yeah, so herself. She and I like that. So uh, yeah, yeah. I want. Good That's setup, a, isn't it? Yeah, but, but you do But wonder. I get your point. Yeah, yeah you, you, you know what it feels like as a parent. And, Absolutely. And so now uh, you're on the flip side of that, though, right. and you feel the responsibility that all of those parents, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, absolutely. To all of those parents and to all of their kids. Well, you know, it's more than just I expect the teachers to teach my kid right and he's supposed to learn it yeah but somebody's got to watch over him i'm not there to protect him so someone's got to do it and then you know i i'm talking to my family at home and i have a 21 year old at smu mm-hmm. and a 10 year old so wow yeah you spread them out well i didn't it, so, let me tell you something <laughs> all right so, uh, explain this clearly i was told we couldn't have any more so all right so, so it's, it wasn't so this is some bullshit yes that was uh, was well, not well. It was my fault, yeah. <laughs> Jason. I don't know what he's trying to say, but it's, 
The, uh, oh, no, it, I'm it gonna take another swig yeah. on that. Uh, by the way, I am having the uh, busy body. It is a blonde lager uh, here at. Oh, you know what? No, I'm having the hissy fit. It's the um, the Martin lager, I believe. I don't even know what he gave me. It's good. Uh, yeah, Mars and Lager. And yeah. you're having a Coke. I'm having a Coke. As that's 30 years of sobriety wiped out if I drink it. <laughs> so, oh. Well, cheers to that. Well, cheers I will to that. Thank absolutely, you. Absolutely. Uh, do a cheers to that. That's phenomenal. Uh, yeah, well, it's been a long run now. Yeah, that um, is. Um, so, but, but we were making the point that you, I, I'm sure that you feel the weight, you know. Uh, of of fielding, oh yeah, essentially. Yeah. I mean, this is a force. How many how many people by the time we get into this school year, how many people will you have out? Do you expect at different campuses, not, not only here across the uh, state, wherever? Well, in Blanco, there's six, mm -hmm. thirteen at Wiley, seventeen at Allen, Allen. Uh, and maybe more to come. Well, we're in the running now for. Um, Northwest, and that's 22. In, in San Antonio? No, here. Oh, here, okay. Here, down by Fort Worth, I think. Oh, I was thinking Northeast, yeah. And then there's um, then there's Denton, which we're negotiating with. Okay. They got 27. Okay. So there's a lot. If they get all of them in place, there's going to be a lot of guards there. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of moving parts to make sure that we don't get the wrong guard in there. Mm -hmm. So it's constantly a checks and balances on them. And you all are a young company. Uh, yeah, relatively speaking. 2018-ish yeah. or so. Uh, and and you're really having to ramp up here. It's, this has been a battle. Yeah, this has been. I mean, it's like the war room. You know, somewhere. I mean, there's eraser boards mm -hmm. and papers and people running all over the place. And it's not that we can't fill it. It's we're very dedicated on who we're filling it with. And that's right. I mean, like I said, I got. It makes it harder. Well, it makes it yeah. hard because you end up rejecting when you need a body, right. but that body doesn't fit, we end up rejecting it, and it's like, well, we're starting back now. I was gonna say, so. you know, because a lot of these uh, districts, even if they have the money, they might also be having trouble locating people, getting people oh, to absolutely. apply for the jobs and yeah. take the job, because you've got so much competition out there with right. different jobs. And it's the, and you know, with guards, it's a price point. I mean, right. it, it, they've gotta be able to pay. We, um, her and I, we're very specific about what we could do for the guards. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm pro the troops. You know, if they're out there working, I'm, I'm behind them as long as they do a good job. We told them we'll pay you this amount of money, hmm. and when the school is closed, we'll put you in one of our other LMP sites, but we'll keep that same pay, hmm. and you'll get that same. What's normally could be a $16 site. Right. We'll keep them at the the salary that they're at. That makes sense. And the time and a half uh, will start at the 20 mark. So things like that, you try to to say, you know, do a good job and then we can keep this going. Do a bad job and I'll remove you. I wonder about the uh, sustainability in, in some cases about you know all of this. Uh, you know, I pulled a little bit from uh, Kevin Reese. He's a guy who works with us uh, mm -hmm. with WFAA TV in uh, Dallas. Uh, and part of what he said was that Wiley ISD says that even though the state has provided the partial funding that we've been talking mm -hmm. about for these new security officers, an armed security guard contract of five hundred thirty-four thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars requires the district still to find another almost two hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars. So they're getting a portion of this from the state, but the district is then having to go out and figure out how they're going to scramble and and sort of cobble together the right. rest of the money to pay for this. And you do wonder, you know, as we go through the years and years ahead, how yeah. they're going to be able to keep doing this. That's one district. Well, I think uh, with Allen, it was. Six, uh, yeah, six hundred ninety thousand, and they, I think they got three twenty or something. Wow, it's 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 hard for them, and your heart bleeds for them because you know they they're having to scramble, and you worry are they going to increase taxes to have to pay for this, mm -hmm. and people are having now they're digging into their pockets, um, so that's a hard road, you know. W with us, we put together like there were things we trimmed it back as far as we could mm -hmm. because I mean. It's still a company, so yeah. there's a profit margin there. Otherwise, it's it's just not lucrative. That's why you're in business, it. right? Yeah. And but then you can't have it so cost prohibitive that you end up not having the, the protection, or you end up cutting it down so low that you don't care who you put in these schools. Mm -hmm. So there's that fine line, isn't it? I would imagine too that there's you know there's plenty of competition out there that does the same thing that you all do, and I'm yeah. just wondering how much on its own now does school security uh, guards, how much of an industry does that itself become here in Texas now? Yeah, I mean, when we're talking for, about these kind of dollar figures. You mean for ISDs particularly? Yeah. It's a, like our bosses, the managers, the owners of the company, they want us to be ISD specific, right? They want us to be able like the specialists in ISD. So we've all worked diligently to get that done. 
Uh, I was a detective in Crimes Against Children, so I dealt with schools a lot. But it's uh, such a different thing when you're, it's so much money, right? People are making so much money, and then the, the poor ISD people are having to foot what they can of it and then scrounge for the rest of it. Mm. It's hard for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we went to that meeting at Allen, the school board meeting, you know, the questions were how we pay for this. Mm. And the governor told them they had to. So, <laughs> you know, this is where we step in. Yeah. But I can understand their concerns. It's, it's difficult. It's one of many difficulties, I guess, that these districts yeah. are, are dealing with as far as, yeah. you know, mandates that come along from the state, yeah. and they've just got to figure out the way to, to and, foot the bill. And, you know, Jason, I don't understand how they, the ones that aren't doing it are not are satisfying HB3. Mm -hmm. Like Frisco, I think, is talking about having just cameras up. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a part of it that I didn't read in HB3, that, that you could do cameras or something along those lines. I don't know how they're not... Uh, adhering to the same regulations. Well, I guess in this case, too, doesn't it seem like we're, I mean, I guess these are uncharted waters that we're going yeah, into absolutely. here as far as, you know, these, these mandates have come down to make these schools safer uh, right. and, and to try to, you know, protect these students better and everybody's sort of figuring out how they're going yeah. to make that work, especially when they don't get a full funding package to do that. That's right. And I guess maybe the governor can, maybe Texas just couldn't afford to pay all that money that security companies request mm -hmm. uh, and when you get into the heavy the big ones like uh, they're not Blackwater anymore but that group yeah they're going to charge a lot mm -hmm. I mean 35 40 dollars an hour per guard on 17 schools for eight hours a day that's a that's a major hit we don't charge that much but when you start reaching up into the high end of it you're talking million 1.4 million a year easily so it is I mean this is in itself an industry oh my uh, oh yeah, yeah absolutely I mean you have very near or passing the million dollar mark yearly and now you you know you subtract the, the costs mm -hmm. but the costs actually are rather minimal because it's just what you're paying the guards right so the rest of it you know is taxable income yeah and 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 you know tea i think estimates that they have almost nine thousand campuses uh in texas the texas education agency says yeah. there's about uh, almost nine thousand campuses in this state so you start multiplying that out if you were to put let's say an armed guard yeah. at each Absolutely. one of those well you have to reduce it down to normally elementaries right so out of that nine thousand you'd have to look at your right. total elementaries right and then you also include your alternative schools they're supposed to put those a guard in that Right. And some intermediate schools, um, middle school areas, have a few right. that they want guards in. But it's that whole, you must have a guard there and not a rotating SRO. Mm -hmm. Like I, SRO could have three schools and rotate, and he doesn't want that. He wants mm -hmm. one dedicated to each school, which is what the armed guards are doing. They're dedicated to one, one now, school. Now, for your business on your end, uh, do you, I mean, you all, again, provide security for a lot of different kinds of things or have over the mm -hmm. years. Does your does it change the dynamic for you? Like, do you have to have more insurance? Let's say if you start sending guards into schools in, instead uh, of just you know, know job sites and so forth. It's I think in school there's a liability issue. We yeah. carry all the liability for any incidents that happens in the school. Yeah, I would uh, imagine your premiums go up uh, just yeah, because of what up. you're protecting oh, and who yeah. you're protecting and, and who we're protecting. Yeah, it's so there's a there is that expense. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's the expense of the car that mm -hmm. we drive around. We don't charge them for that. We don't charge it for the sergeants or the lieutenants. They're just on payroll. And I guess that's why a lot of the districts have decided to outsource too, because it's not just a matter of trying to find the money for the armed guard. Right. It's also outfitting them and getting them a car and, 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 and all of and the other stuff expensive. that comes along with it. You start going into these uniform shops, they're, they're pricey. Mm -hmm. You start going into the little badges that they wear on their sleeves, expensive. Mm -hmm. And to put them on is an additional cost. Then you get duty belts, duty rigs, guns, especially if we issue the weapon, mm -hmm. that's an expensive venture. Mm -hmm. And all that has to fall on someone to pay. We pay it because we have all the vendors that do the bulk discounts and things like that. But I would not, if I were a school, I wouldn't begin to attempt to do that on my own, mm -hmm. unless I hired someone dedicated to just doing that. Right, and, they, and that's where, uh, you know, specialists like, you know, what you all are, are, are getting into coming yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's, but it's hard, you know, because you're asking people, Please understand that this is expensive, but this is why it's expensive, because they're protecting your children. But, you know, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a hit. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this, this is difficult um, uh, as far as, you know, guard work goes. It's, it seems like it would be a really difficult task because you're there to protect these kids right. that you see every day. Uh, but on any given day, any one of these kids could be the one you're protecting all of the other ones from. 
Yeah, in elementary schools, you limit that a bit. Yeah, you that's know? true. But true. Uh, it's, you know, it, I was looking at stats for what elementary school crimes might be. Yeah. And what it is is dad wants, has custody on the weekend, mom's coming to pick up the kid, dad and mom show up. Right. And there's a fight. Uh, now, dad pulls a gun out, it's an active shooter, then my guards would take control of that. Yeah. Other than that, it's a 911 issue. I don't want them involved in that. As a matter of fact, I went to the director of security on these schools and I told him these guards cannot be extra hands of labor for your schools. So you can't ask them to unfold chairs for a PTA meeting. Hmm. You can't ask them to bring the cupcakes out of the car, you know, to right. bring for the party. They These are good points, though, because you could see that very easily happening. Oh, absolutely. And so I sat down with them. I said, "That's uh, I'm going to tell them, task them with saying, I'm sorry, I can't do that, politely telling them I got a patrol. And this is the same argument that you make as to why you don't feel like it's a great idea to be arming employees oh, at no. the school who are doing other things, because if you're doing other things, you might miss the thing that you exactly. really need to protect against. That's exactly it. And that's why I sat down and, you know, you sit with the chief of police. They don't, I don't think they're very pro this program because they uh, I think maybe they must get funding from the state for SROs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my guess. I don't know. I didn't work for Texas. So but you've gotten not, a little bit of a cold reception. Uh, yeah, a little bit. You know, they weren't as friendly as I thought they would be. Uh, and then they, you know, try to drop the, I'm a cop, you may not understand, and I address that immediately because yeah. I do understand. So, yeah. but one of them said to me, and I will say because I, I, I'm sure I'll be fired. But <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, Yeah, you know, don't tell us whatever yeah. might get you fired. Yeah, I don't want to be fired. But he said you know, you train these guards and how do you know they're going to shoot? And I said to him, how do you know your patrolmen are going to shoot? Right. I mean, no one knows. And he goes, well, they're trained to shoot. And I said, well, tell Uvalde that. Okay. Before you start throwing, saying my guards aren't going to shoot, you can, let me make sure all your troops can shoot if someone shoots at them. So there was a, a little, we had to get kind of a bridge hmm. to understand that these are not just people I put into a, a uniform and stick them out on a post and say, good luck with this. They're trained and we handpick each one of them. And Otherwise, this was a chief of police at a school district? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nice guy. He right. was just, he was, you know, he, he doesn't want guards with guns. Mm -hmm. and he doesn't want teachers with guns. He wants his boys with guns. And I get that. I mean, his, that's his loyalty group. Well, right? you know, there are some parents out there, too, who would say, I don't want, I, I mean, I want my kid to be safe at school, but I don't want there to be another person with a gun on campus. What do oh, you say yeah. to those parents? It takes between, when you call 911, it goes to a dispatcher. The dispatcher takes pertinent information as she's feeding it to, at least in New York, as, he, as she's feeding it to the troops to go and do that. So you're talking about the time it's called in to it's got there and, and going in, you're talking, what, maybe two minutes, mm. three minutes, if you're, if you're nearby. I mean, Texas is, like, ridiculously big, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you could travel a long distance and still be in Allen. Yeah. So you're talking about the time frame it takes to get a cop there and how much damage can be done in two or three minutes with someone with a, with a semi-automatic weapon mm. or an assault weapon. So I would think, I would fall on the side as a parent, and I am a parent for a kid in elementary school. I want someone there with a gun on site. I don't want to have to wait for them to show up. Not that, and God bless them, they, they go top speed to get there, and they run in with their guns, and they're ready to take care of business. But there is a time frame between the call to dispatch, dispatch disseminating the information to the troops, and the troops getting there. Mm -hmm. So there is a time frame, even if they're good, and I'm sure they are. But the, you're talking about a minute, two minutes, I could do a lot of damage with an assault weapon in two minutes. You have so much background uh, in, in all of this, and as you mentioned, you are a parent of an yeah. elementary school student. I'm curious, you know, as much as you knew going in, when Uvalde happened, did that change how you thought? Uh, did it change? Uh, did you take anything away from that and go, wow, I always thought it would be, you know, more protected than this? I, well, I mean, Everybody was, um, I was disappointed in the police behavior, mm. right? I think every cop was disappointed in the police behavior. I mean, not going in and addressing the shooter when you're there mm -hmm. and they're still active shooting. I, no cop, any street cop can't get their head wrapped around that because they wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. None of the guys I ever worked with, and I worked with some of the finest men and women out there, in my opinion, they would have went in irrespective of whether or not a sergeant was telling me not to or the chief of police was telling me not to. Mm -hmm. um, and it sort of highlighted the fact that maybe my kid is not as safe as I want to believe they are when I drop them off. Because mm -hmm. it's like blinders to me. You know, I mean, I'm dropping them off, you're safe, no one's gonna come in and shoot. And then these things happen and you think, okay, that's just not necessarily accurate. And then you start worrying. Mm -hmm. You know, you start thinking, you know, what happens if someone does come in? Who's gonna address that? Mm -hmm. uh, if I can get there, I'll address it. Uh, 
but they're but then they don't let you. Right? right. We saw that in Uvalde. Yeah, they don't let you. Yeah. And I would feel better, much better, if the guard I looked at was armed and looked like he could handle it, looked like he could do it, and I would feel that's at least a degree of safety, hmm. you know. Maybe um, even a, uh, just a deterrent. Yeah, uh, yeah, you hope yeah. for a deterrent. But my thing was more like this guard, at least there's something in place. Hmm. It's not just open. It's not void. There's got to be someone there with a gun that has been trained to stop someone from hurting my kid. Mm. And that is all that matters to any parent. You know that, mm -hmm. Jason. I mean, you Absolutely. have kids. So yeah. the only thing you think about is my kid's coming home. I don't care who else, uh, what happens to the guy. My kid, you want him to come home. So you want that body there with a gun walking on just that campus so that I feel better about everything. Um, when this so when this school year starts obviously you all are going to yeah, probably be busier than you've ever been as a company probably. uh if i loop back with you and talk to you a year from now what do you see for the company that you're with right now as far as the growth goes introduce my new job yeah <laughs> <laughs> right it's, uh, uh, i'm sorry what, you want me how would i feel about it now no i mean how, how 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 much do you see the company that you're with growing just in in this next year oh, i mean this is if they pick up the schools that that we're currently talking to there there wouldn't be a need to have like a dallas county contract necessarily mm -hmm. anymore because it would be like a such a specialized niche and you know it's only a year long and it's only 174 days yeah so you got to keep your guards working in between those days but if you could get five six twelve schools the amount of money it would would i mean you're talking about almost a million dollars a year mm -hmm. per school so i mean it's amazing we think of the income coming in 12 13 million dollars a year a million dollars a year per so, school right wow so, so that's uh that's extraordinary yeah because it, the school like allen is being charged almost 800,000. Yeah. So per district. So per district, right. You're talking million about a million. Books. Wow. And that's a lot of money. It is. You know, and for a business, it's a windfall. Right. But you got to perform. Are we going to see a lot of security companies popping up? Not if we can help it. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, you know, it's not that. It's it's you know, God bless them if they can do the job and they can protect the kids. I'm 100% on board with them. I mean, I believe in competition. It forces us to make sure that the quality we do is is good, right? Yeah. I mean, it's probably with you, right? Competing against other news stations. Right. If you don't perform well, then I go to another channel. It's the same thing, I think, in this thing. Competition makes me work harder and make sure that the work is done properly. My kid makes sure that I do this properly mm. because that's what kind of the, that's the picture, right? You have in your head is your own kid. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's important. Uh, yeah, there'll be others popping up. They've already reached out to some. At the end of the day here, um, as, as we go into another school year here, uh, there's your company uh, putting guards out there. There are other companies putting guards out there. Some of these ISDs have their own police yeah. forces. Um, do you think that the state has got it here? Do you think that the state got this right and that you will rest easier and that other parents of elementary school students in particular will rest easier because of this? Well, it's certainly a step in the right direction, isn't it? I mean, I think the cops ultimately are going to come in for an active shooter if the guard doesn't take him out. The guard, the cops are going to come in and the guard's going to be removed from that emergency situation. He's not going to be involved anymore. He's going to do crowd control. And the cops are going to come in. So it's a two, to me it's two prong. You need well-trained guards that can eliminate the issue immediately if it were to occur. But you also got to train your cops to handle active shooters. You got to train your cops on the exact protocol, irrespective of what a boss is saying on the scene, that their policy is this, their program is this. So it's got to be two. I want to know that, yes, this guard is good, but I also want to know when the police show up with their SWAT gear on and their weapons and things like that, that they're going to go in and take care of it, that they've trained enough to be able to finish the task. And we so all thought that lesson was known before you, Valdi, but yeah. uh, how confident are you as a former law enforcement officer that that lesson has definitely been learned post Uvalde after we all saw what happened or didn't yeah. happen there? Well, you know, that's what happened is what didn't happen was the lesson. Mm -hmm. And no one, in, in my mind, after years of, of being a cop and decades of being a cop, <clears throat> I can't imagine it in my head what stopped those guys from going in. I can't, I can't wrap my head around that at all. But the embarrassment of it, I think, would spur me, if I were the chief of police, to make sure that my men did not ever, ever run across that problem again. Mm. So 
sometimes a spanking is the best lesson. And I think, you know, I mean, police department took a black eye with that. Mm -hmm. So I hope, I hope the balance is there. I hope they have the guard on post that can address it immediately. And I hope their backup, if it's an ongoing shooter and the police are there, that they're trained enough to handle it. So. I think we all have that hope uh, yeah, as we go too. into another school year here in Texas. Uh, Charlie Hollis, Director of Operations, LMP Global Security in Addison, a fast-growing uh, security <laughs> firm uh, these days. I almost feel guilty for, for having kept you this long to talk to you because I, I, I can only imagine what the <laughs> workload is like right now trying to <laughs> trying to ramp this all up. And, yeah. and, and Wanda's been sitting here, poor thing, listening to us, yeah. uh, unable to even talk, and she's in HR. Yep. And she <laughs> probably has a lot of people she should be hiring. <laughs> right now yeah we're glad to be out of the office for a little while yeah yeah <laughs> we need that break so. it's probably helpful you know who yeah. else thinks that way jason whiteley i know because he's not here <laughs> always <laughs> thinks always it's good to be out of the office jason. we'll see if he returns here next week uh <laughs> charlie i might call on you and wanda again to you know come out and hang out oh, with absolutely. me because it, i've fun. been solo it seems like more than i haven't been this year uh, we can replace Jay. he's replaceable oh totally so he's, uh, <laughs> if any <laughs> if anything has been proven that has been proven Y'all, thanks so much oh, for uh, taking Thank the you. time with us. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And best of luck. Oh, I appreciate it, Jason. Thank you.